55 here. What up? What up? Kingdom Hearts originally started as something that I was interested in because the idea of Disney and Square making a game seemed fairly interesting. That being said, I don't think anybody was asking for a Disney Square combination because it was just Square back then. But at the time, I still liked Disney characters enough for it to be interesting. I think Square understood that its fans would need something more than that. So they put in Final Fantasy characters. They put in Cloud and Sephiroth. Arguably at that time, still the most iconic Final Fantasy characters. That was enough to get me sold on a game. And there was still this little hope back then that you might get to play with them. It wasn't like it is now where you have tons of information, a bunch of trailers, the whole game spoiled, 300 YouTube channels covering it. Info was scarce. Kingdom Hearts 1 came out March 2002, which was five years after Final Fantasy VII came out. And by putting Cloud and Sephiroth in the game, they knew that they'd be drawing from that audience. They also had other Final Fantasy characters. Now, in the original game, the world building had enough Disney areas to satisfy my imagination. Then you throw Square's RPG creative Japanese style on top of it. And for the first game, that came off as original and new. And the way they used the other Final Fantasy characters was enough to keep me engaged in the game without making it a Final Fantasy game. Sephiroth being a secret boss for the Colosseum is a perfect example of this. So when you take this recipe of a Disney game created by Square Enix for the first time, it's enough to get you into the series. But for me, that was it. When the game ended, I was looking for more at the time, that's true, but the next game didn't come out until 2005, a whole three years later, and at that time, my whole interest in this series died. I moved on to greater JRPGs and fighting games, but that normally wouldn't be enough for a diehard Square fan, at least at that time, like myself, to move away from the Square Enix series that easily. While I love the way they use Final Fantasy characters and Kingdom Hearts, they didn't use them in a way that kept my attention and left me dying for part two. Sora and Cruel also didn't develop enough as characters during the first game for me to care about it. So while I enjoyed the game, I didn't feel attached to the characters and I don't think I'm alone in that. Also, after listening to that terrible voice dubbed acting in the game I, I, didn't, I was done the idea of having to hear the voice again for part two was enough for me not to play the game anymore also i had wanted to see what square would do with mickey like you know like the, the japanese version but i didn't really get that in part one either maybe they did it more in part two uh for those who love Sora and crew and the villains of the game, none of which I remember for the most part, except some of the Disney characters. The villains failed to keep my interest. So these were the things that were working against the series at the time. But if you fell in love with Sora and, and the crew, then you, you got a lot more out of it. I didn't. So I completely fell off with Kingdom Hearts after that. Until I saw this trailer. So why would I reinvest in the idea of Kingdom Hearts after almost 20 years? Kingdom Hearts 4 anyway. Well, say, to say, to be honest, it's because there's a lack of JRPGs in the field right now. And uh, this is the most interesting thing I've saw in a while that I at least cared about. It would be a gigantic task for me to play the old games over again or to reread the super long storyline if Kingdom Hearts for future trailers are as interesting as the one I'm looking at now, then this could become a renewed love experience and series for me. So that's another reason why I'm considering Kingdom Four Hearts. It has a lot of potential in terms of renewed interest and involvement 
and it's a, a package deal because you get a whole lot of storylines and other things you can enjoy. The other thing that caught my attention about this trailer was this image of Saw running through the building like Noctis. I have to imagine the developers did that on purpose to grab the Final Fantasy 15 fans. And there were plenty of them, right? So you definitely want to draw on that audience. Plus the realistic looking graphics. I'm gravitating toward that because you're going to have a more interesting series. It's like... How interesting can a series get if you really don't kill Disney characters, I don't think. And how interesting can a series get with Disney characters, but it being placed in the real world and how imposing that Heartless, I think that's the proper name for it, looked in the middle of that city and the people running for their lives, that creates more of a dramatic element to it. That can grab my interest more. Because it's now more of a Final Fantasy world, and they had to in, and they had to put a Final Fantasy world into this game in the first place to grab my interest. It takes so much. You think about Sora and the crew as just characters. Look at how much help they needed to be interesting. And this is not from casual players' point of view, right? This is from the developers' point of view. When they did the game, they had to do it like that. They had to add all that stuff, and then after like almost 20 games and all these different versions, they finally were like, all right, now in Kingdom Hearts 4, you know, or in, actually in Kingdom Hearts 3, this is enough. This char these characters are interesting enough without Final Fantasy characters to carry the game, and a lot of people weren't happy with that. A lot of people weren't happy with Kingdom Hearts 3. However, this new one has... The potential to really turn the series around so i'm going to see what they're going to do with it the combat system and villains are going to really be what sells the game i think also it be wise to give people the option to play as other characters besides sora um, some disney characters and make them more available that can't possibly be hurt also the noctis or maybe his name was Caleb, I'm not really sure. Whatever the original Final Fantasy 13 Noctis looking character's name is, throwing him into the game, probably be great. If he was a secret playable character, I see a lot of cells with that. I see a lot of cells with that, but they might be interested in making their own universe for him. I, I certainly buy it. The Nice Sky Prince has some excellent videos on that. One thing that would turn me off from the game is if I see a bunch of Disney Avengers characters, that's gonna probably, they would have to do a really good job for me to consider that. Cause I, you know, Square Enix and the Avengers game definitely was not it. If they throw the Avengers into this game, cause they are Disney characters, the Night Sky Prince video put, my mind on this. I, I, I'll put the video in the link. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm not I'm not going to be feeling that. I already know that. So, maybe another video on that entirely. But in short, am I considering or should you consider playing Kingdom Hearts 4? Based on this trailer, I would say the answer is yes. We're going to see what's going to go on with the future trailers. I'm going to take it from there. Yo, this is DeepMind255. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm out. One.